of all patients in the first study that we now are in the Talking about PKU, we are also um, confronted with another disease, the defects of uh, BH4 metabolism. What's the difference between these two? They are totally different disorders. They share a common metabolite, that is the increase of phenylalanine. This means that you pick up the patient by neonatal screening because there is an increase of phenylalanine. But after the assay of phenylalanine, you should look at other metabolites, the called pterins, and one enzyme called DHPR is a deficiency of a reductase that is extremely important for the metabolism of BH4. In this way, you can differentiate patients that are suffering from classical phenylketonuria from patients that are suffering from BH4 disorders. The difference is not only related to the metabolic compounds like phenylalanine and the neurotransmitters, but the difference is only in the treatment of the disorder. If you use for classical PKU diet plus or without tetrabiopterin, in BH4 disorder, the treatment is extremely complicated. You must use diet for some patient, you can must use BH4 for other patient, but you have to add special drugs called dopamine and dopamine agonist. They are very difficult drugs to use overall in childhood because the, the amount of the drug is very limited, because they have a, a lot of side effects, because you need real experience in treating this patient. Another important thing is the diagnosis. I want to underline that only patients who were diagnosed very, very early and treated early, I mean first week of life, can have an outcome quite good in comparison to the disorder. If the diagnosis will be late, the diseases are so aggressive for the brain, then also starting the therapy, the desire of a good outcome is very difficult to get. So, it's a new field of interest. Eh? What can we learn from it for treatment and diagnosis for PKU? You can learn that uh, PKU is different from these disorders, but the common metabolite, phenylalanine, can play an important role for the brain. I mean, it's not only a phenylalanine problem, but probably is a phenylalanine and dopamine problem. And this is true not only for the BH4 defects, but also for the classical PKU. These common metabolites, they have I mean, dopamine and phenylalanine, they work at any age, but the effect is much more serious for the outcome when they become adult. Because this also opened the idea to in strat different strategies for the classical PKU. Because what we learn by treating the BH4 disorder is the balance between neurotransmitters, pterins, and phenylalanine. It's a very complicated play where every metabolite is, is playing in a different way, but only putting all together, you can get good result for the patient. When I mean good result, means normal outcome of the disease. Okay, and, and so, and how important is it for you uh, to work on these guidelines? It's extremely important overall for the diagnostic point of view. Because if you stop measuring only phenylalanine by another screening, and you don't follow the guideline where it is very clear the statement that neonatal screening today is measuring phenylalanine, pterins, and also DHPR activity, you miss this patient. And also, this is extremely important, if you load the patient with BH4, you can pick up this patient because most of these disorders, not all, they respond very well in terms of decreasing phenylalanine in a very short period of time. This means that you have a patient with a high level of phenylalanine, you load with BH4, and in three hours you can see a decrease, a sharp decrease of phenylalanine. These kind of patients are not classical PQ patients, 
are BH4 defect patients. Okay, so finally, do you think it's also for patients useful to have these guide, gu guidelines? Extremely useful for the patient because it's the only way in, I know, I'm, I can say not only in Europe, but worldwide, to pick up this patient, not to miss the patient. Because in the guideline, all these statements are so clear that if you follow the guideline everywhere, you can diagnose in a right way this patient affected by BH4 disorders. And probably, we know at the moment only 2-3% of all patients with a high increase of phenylalanine are suffering from BH4 defects. Probably they are more, they are misses, they are confused, because they do not a right screening that they, we must do now for these disorders. Even if th th there are not many patients, it's extremely important. It's extremely important because they are very aggressive disorder. And probably we miss some patients because we miss the right approach that is very well written in the guideline of diagnose these patients. Because if you miss this, um, this diagnose, and you postpone the diagnosis, it's so complicated then. Do the right thing. I mean, measure neurotransmitters, it's a very invasive method. You need a specialized center doing this kind of uh, assays because at only a neonatal period, you can diagnose easily this disorder. If the, but if you don't follow the guidelines, you miss, totally miss this patient. And this is the reason because guidelines are extremely important, even these patients are not the classical PKU. Am I right when I say, uh, once working on these guidelines, use them f worldwide, not only for Europe? Absolutely. This, uh, this, uh, this is the message, I mean. There are guidelines they can use everywhere. And you are sure that you are able to pick up the right disease and not treat one disease for another. This is another big mistake. Thank you very much. Thank you.